with me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the 2019 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series, your guide to some of the biggest and hottest names of the 2019 NFL Draft. For those of you who have been following this series for quite some time, this is a different look. We're actually going to watch film this year and take a look at these prospects in that regard. Now, this is going to be a little bit faster paced now. I'm going to run each and every single play in slow motion so that I can say what I need to say and you can see what I am seeing uh, through these plays. I'm going to give you some of the things that I see. You're watching this film through my lens, so I'm picking out several plays from each game that I thought was pertinent to take a look at with these players. Um, we're going to do this with every single player in this series that we're going to be able to get to before the draft. And so this is going to be a different look at how I see these prospects. And the first one we're going to start with, we always start with the quarterback position, and this is no different. We're going to start with Dwayne Haskins, quarterback of the Ohio State University, 6'3", 220, and a one-year starter at Ohio State, 13-1 and for the Buckeyes in 2018 in his lone season as the starter. A set numerous records for the Buckeyes in terms of his passing and also uh, was able to lead them to a victory versus Washington in the Rose Bowl. So uh, Haskins is a big time prospect in this draft at the quarterback position, probably going to be a top five pick. By many standards, he's the number one guy at the quarterback position in this draft. If he's not number one, he's number two for most people behind Kyler Murray. For me, I'm not as high on Haskins. He's number three for me. If you haven't had a chance to check out my uh, top five QBs of the 2019 NFL draft video, it's in the archives on the Louis T Network. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single video as these will be coming out very randomly. That being said, I think he's the third quarterback behind Locke and Murray. And so um, I'll show you why. There are a number of questions about his um, ability to throw the football accurately down the field, which is one of my biggest pet peeves of Dwayne Haskins, his ability to throw the football once being moved off the spot accurately. And so um, him having to reset his feet and then deliver the football, uh, he's not the cleanest doing that as well. But I think a lot of his issues stem from just a lack of experience, a one-year starter, a guy that hasn't seen a lot of things. And I think as he gets more time to play, he'll become that much better. And I think it's the potential and the upside that a lot of people are in love with when talking uh, Dwayne Haskins. But let's get to his tape and look at what he brings to the table, some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. And like I said, each of these plays are going to be in slow motion so that I can explain them to you in a way that we don't have to go through this three and four and five different times. So let's start with this first game versus TCU. And I think this is a, a great opportunity to see his arm strength. I, I told you he doesn't throw a beautiful deep ball or an accurate one at that, but this is 54 air yards from point of pass to point of catch. This is as good as it gets, folks. Uh, and that's probably one of the better deep balls you're going to see from Dwayne Haskins. It's a gorgeous throw there. And uh, that's what you want to see more of from him. This is a, a play where he stared down the gun barrel. Look, he's going to take a shot here. All right. And this is what NFL teams look for. Boom. He takes a shot, delivers the football. Again, it's a minimal game, but it's the fact that he was willing to stand in there knowing he was going to get hit and deliver the football. That's a great play by Haskins. This next throw. This is going to show you a little bit of a lack of awareness. You got a corner blitz there, one-on-one -on -one with the safety. He's got to let that thing go sooner. That guy is beat. Look, he's beat by a full yard and a half, and he underthrows him severely. He'd love to have that one back. That's the kind of play he's got to make, and you see him underthrow a lot of his receivers. This play here, you're going to see him show you the arm strength once again. This is a tight window throw here. And he's able to zing it in there with some hot sauce. I mean, this one had some hot sauce to go. Let's take another look at this one. This one, he zings in there. And again, this one is a coverage over the top and another defender underneath. And he somehow fits this one in there. This is gorgeous, folks. And that's a tight window throw. And that'll get you a win in the NFL every single day of the week. So this next game is the first true road test of Dwayne Haskins' young career at the Ohio State University on the road versus Penn State in a hostile environment. And I wanted to see how he would fare. And they were down in this football game. And some of it, the fault of Haskins, some of it, not the fault of Haskins. We'll get into all of that as we look at some of these clips. But um, he was able to battle back, rally his troops late in this football game, down big, and showed a little bit of the intestinal fortitude that you're looking for from a quarterback in 
the NFL. So um, let's take a look at this first clip as we start this game off on the road. You see a guy that is able to get out of the pocket here on the move, throw the football accurately for a guy that is not very athletic and doesn't possess a lot of speed. To be able to throw it on the move accurately is something that's going to bode well for him moving on to the next level. This next throw here is an example of him being forced off the spot. Something I talked about at the top of the show and why he is a guy that a lot of people question about his athleticism and accuracy on the move. This is a great example. So you're going to get a look at this one. He's flushed out of the pocket with, with quick interior pressure here. All right. So the, the guard gets beat. He's able to elude the pressure, which is a great job by Haskins. But then what is he doing here? Where's that football going? Now, he may have thought that receiver was going to throttle down and stop. It may, may, may have been a miscommunication, but that's a bad throw nonetheless. And that's on the quarterback. Uh, on this particular play here. Um, this just shows the lack of, of speed and athleticism. And, and this is not in the Dwayne Haskins package. If this is what you're looking for from a quarterback, he's not your guy. And um, number 11 was kind of spying on the play here, this linebacker. But again, um, if this were Kyler Murray, and I hate to compare the two, they're not the same player. Murray is going to be able to either pick up this first down or at least get close. Same can be said for Drew Locke. Haskins, not the case. He's not going to be able to outrun many defensive linemen, let alone linebackers. And again, this is Penn State. Isn't it, this isn't Alabama or Georgia. This is Penn State. But again, that's not Haskins' strong suit. So don't look for him to be doing this uh, very often at the next level. But you go to the next play, and this is just an absolute cannon off his back foot. This is a long throw, folks. Look at this throw. You're talking about from the opposite hash all the way outside the numbers. The guy doesn't even step into this throw. Take a look at this again. He doesn't even step into this throw. Now, a lot of people bash uh, like Drew Locke for not stepping into throws and throwing off his back foot. But come on, guys, if you can complete this, you're not going to get too much complaint out of me. I mean, look at this one more time. Look at his feet. He flings this thing essentially with all arm. It's accurate and it's got some sauce on it. That's a hell of a throw. And, but this is the play here in the red zone, tight window situations, got to throw with timing and anticipation. This ball should be gone now. The, the corner is flat-footed. He's got to let that football go sooner so the safety can't get over there and help. He just held on to that too long, and not only did he miss an opportunity for a touchdown there, they didn't score on that possession. So let's stop this thing now. I want to stop this video so that you can look at the time, you can look at the situation in this game, and... You can look at where the Buckeyes are in this particular moment of the football game. They're down 12, two scores in this game with less than seven minutes to go. And they're right, right around midfield, okay? And Haskins needs a score in the worst way, and they need it quickly. These are what I call the it factor moments, where it's winning time, you need it, you need your quarterback to deliver, Haskins did that for his team. Now, granted, this was not a great throw, and you'll see this on the replay, but this wasn't a great throw. But what Haskins did, and remember, we talked about the inaccuracies with him being moved off the spot and having to deliver without his feet necessarily being set the way he wants them to. We've talked about that. This was not an accurate throw, and this kind of speaks to that. But again, you want to get the football in the general vicinity of a playmaker and allow them to make a play. Let's take a look at this play here and watch it unfold. So he drops back here, deep drop, a little bit deeper than you would like, but he steps up to avoid pressure and unloads the football. It's not a great throw, and you'll see that from the back angle. That's not a great angle to see how bad of a throw that really was. But nonetheless, his receiver, uh, Benjamin Victor, makes a play here and is able to uh, not only make the catch on a ball that was thrown severely behind him, but also get some run after the catch and get into the end zone. A big play in this game that really turned this game on its head and into the favor of Ohio State. So take a look at this. A very deep drop, probably deeper than you would like here from Haskins. That allows the pressure to get up the field. He has to elude the pressure. Look at where this ball is. This is not a good ball. This is way outside the frame of the receiver, but this is a big receiver with a huge catch radius that bails him out. Look at this football. That's not a great ball, but he gave his receiver a chance. He made a play, and I'll take that from my quarterback 10 times out of 10. Give the receiver a chance to make a play. Haskins did that, and that resulted in a big play for a touchdown that turned this game around. So now what I want you to look at on this next clip is I don't care about this play. I don't care about 
anything that happens um, moving forward. What I want you to focus in on is what I like to call game awareness. The score, the time, down and distance, portion of the field the team is at, and what you need to have done. Penn State's down, or excuse me, Ohio State's down five. So field goal won't do. You need a touchdown. Less than five minutes to go in this game. You're starting at your own four-yard line. All right, hostile environment. I'm pretty sure the crowd feels like it's right on the back of its neck, his neck as he's snapping his football. He's in the end zone at the snap, and yet he's able to rally the troops, take them down the field, and get into the end zone. Now, again, we don't need to see all of that. This is a screen here on this particular play to, to J.K. Dobbins, who catches it, runs for an additional 30 yards, gets him out past the 40. This drive would end in a... Um, Haskins to uh, KJ Hill touchdown pass and that would give Ohio State the lead they would ultimately hold on and win this game but look where they are on the field and look what Haskins had to get them out of great play calling to run the screen to get them uh, some breathing room more than enough breathing room to kick start the drive but Haskins brought them back on the road and that's what you wanted to see in this instance so now we find ourselves at um, a pivotal moment in the Ohio State Buckeye season. Uh, this was the game that essentially cost them an opportunity to play in the playoffs. And every year it seems like Ohio State has one of these Big Ten duds on the road. Last year it was Iowa. This year it was Purdue. But Haskins threw it 73 times in this game. And he was not good in this game, especially early. And it was some of his early misses that set the stage for them to really ultimately get blown out later in this game and not be close. Had he played better early, you could be talking about a different game, one that maybe Ohio State actually wins and maybe they're playing in the playoffs with a chance at a national championship. But that's nor here nor there. Bottom line is this is a game that I really wanted to take a look at. Let's run this first one. This is one you just got to have this one. In the NFL, you don't get any more open than this. You can't afford to miss these when these opportunities come. Um, look at how wide open this receiver is. Come on, guys. Come on. He's got to put more air under that, allow that receiver to run under that. That's a terrible throw. Here, anticipate. Throw that now. Throw it now. He waited too long, and and then he didn't throw it enough for, uh, far enough to the corner. Just bad ball placement. Got to score a touchdown there. They instead have to settle for a field goal. Um, same thing with the, the the deep ball. You know, got to settle for a field goal. In any event, here's an opportunity on a third down. Inaccurate. Clean pocket. Inaccurate football. Got to have that one. And there's no excuse for that one. Then this one, this is a predetermined throw here. And he's lucky it's not picked off. He, he stares it down. He's expecting that linebacker to not be able to be there. And he, he predetermines his throw. This is inexcusable. You can't throw this one. There's an underneath defender buzzing underneath this throw. What is he looking at? I, I don't know where he thought he was fitting his football or how he didn't see that underneath defender, but that's not a good decision at all. Okay. So now you go to this third down throw, and this is a beauty. Third down and long. All right. Third and eight. And he throws a strike. Okay. Again, deep. That's a far throw, guys. He makes it look easy for a first down, sets his feet, throws and delivers an accurate pass for a first down there. Now, here's an underthrown deep ball, 47 air yards. This has to be completed. All right. He's got a step. He's winning. That's two full steps on the defender. Now, he gets P.I. All right. As a consolation. But that could have easily been seven with a better throw. He needs to make that throw. You look at this next play, a cornerback blitz, something that Haskins struggles with. Look. He doesn't see that buzz defender. He was there, almost picked it off, should have been picked off. He's got to see that. Corner blitz, remember he struggled with that versus TCU? He struggles with it again here. Corner blitz, which means there's nobody out there. Either you have to check to something else or you have to go away from that when you see that guy buzz underneath. He just never saw him. This play here, beautiful deep ball, 44 air yards. This is how you throw the deep ball. This is what he needs to do more often and not like we've seen earlier in the game where he's missing guys. That's a beautiful deep ball, 44 yards in the air. And here, this is an interception, poor ball placement. And, and at this point, he feels like he needs to make a play. This game's already over, but what are we doing here? I mean, guys running an outbreaking route. You throw it to the inside. Uh, it just doesn't get much worse than that. And you know, in the NFL, 
You miss inside on an outbreaking route, this is exactly what's going to happen to you. And that is exactly what happened there as Ohio State was waxed on the road at Purdue. So we move on to the next game at home versus Nebraska. And um, this first play that you'll take a look at is a simple check down. And it doesn't seem like much, but on a, on a second and 11, where you just want to get back in a, in a nice down and distance, it's a great job by Haskins of checking down to the back. And look at that. You end up in a situation where he fumbles, but had he not fumbled, you're looking at third and one, okay? That's a great job of not forcing anything and seeing your check down, knowing where he is, and getting him the football. This next play, another corner blitz. We talked about Haskins not identifying corner blitz pre-snap and him struggling with it. Here's another example. Corner blitz off the slot this time. He didn't see it, and it's not picked up. He didn't change his protection. He didn't hot read. He didn't get rid of it quickly. Look at it again. Guy coming right off the slot. Haskins never sees him, never identifies it, and he gets walloped here and fumbles the football. And again, He's got to do a better job. And I think that's going to come with experience. More experience, I think he'll learn how to identify that pre-snap. Here's a predetermined throw. He forced this, and you're in the red zone. You can't make this mistake. This is a forced predetermined ball that shouldn't have been thrown. If you're going to throw that one back corner of the end zone by the pylon, you cannot force that and make that kind of mistake. And that was with a clean pocket. Here, he really doesn't want to run. He does not really want to run this ball. Look at all this space, folks. He should have been taken off. Look at the way you're sliding for all that space out there. Again, not an athlete. Just keep that in mind. And here, this is underthrown severely. 54 air yards, folks. He should have thrown this a lot sooner. But you see the hitch and all of the time he takes. This ball should have been completed for a touchdown. It's underthrown. He allows the defender to get back into play. Throw that ball out there. He's open. His deep ball accuracy or lack thereof, it concerns me greatly. That's another big play. Even if it's not a touchdown, that is down inside the 10-yard line. Those are passes you can't afford to miss at the next level. You just can't. And routinely, time and time again, Dwayne Haskins, is missing those opportunities down the field. So let's get to the next game. And this was an indictment on Haskins here, this game against Michigan State. Um, this was one of his worst games of the year um, in, in a game where they, they found it tough to score. And we knew Michigan State, they played some defense in 2018. And he struggled here on the road in, in a tough environment. Um, he did not fare all that well, but they got the victory, but it was not pretty at all let's take a look at uh Dwayne Haskins versus Michigan State so this first play he makes the throw to the flats look very easy and this is another example of arm strength I mean look at that guy tries to go underneath now it's incomplete but guy tries to cut underneath and he didn't stand a chance it's a great throw off his back foot there but it was incomplete um and more issues with the corner blitz I talked about him struggling with the corner blitz not identifying it teams look the book's out we know you can't handle corner blitz. Guess what you're going to see? Corner blitz. And so look at this again. Guys come screaming off the backside. Haskins never identifies it, which you should see that safety. Watch him buzz over. That tells you what you need to know. That tells you that that corner is coming because he's in man-to-man -man over there. Haskins never sees it, never looks at that side of the field. And because of it, he gets sacked. And so he's got to be better. And again, more experience, I think, will clean that kind of stuff up. But here's another miss on a deep ball. And again, you just can't have this. When a guy is open, you got to get him the rock. And I told you, that's what separates quarterbacks in this league. Look at this. Two yards, uh, uh, two steps of separation. Got to have it. I need it. I got to have it. And Haskins just misses too often. He's hanging tough in the pocket on this one versus zone. This is beautiful. All right. I, I always say if they give you a three-man rush, and this, in this case, it's a four-man rush, but um, they, they try to drop back because it's second and long and, and they don't want to give it. It's zone. Eat it up. Yum, yum. Eat them up. Uh, we'll take another look at this. Great protection by the offensive line. Gives Haskins time to manipulate the pocket and survey the field. And with this much time, you got to make him pay. And he does it on this play. Watch his head. Watch his eyes. He's surveying the field, going through reads, going through reads. Finds the guy screaming across the middle of the field. Throws it into a window beautifully on the button. That is as good as it gets by Haskins. You see his head. You see him going through progressions. Look at that throw. In that window, on the money, you got to love that from Haskins. 
So right here, you want to see him have a little bit of touch here, though. You, you need more touch on his throw. That's the right read. He's, he's there. That's good coverage. But back corner of the end zone might have given his receiver a chance. So on this play, I talked about his unwillingness to run. Well, this play, he actually shows that he can and he will run when necessary. And so this when he sticks his foot in the ground and he goes, he actually stepped out of the bounds prior to the first down and, and was holding on the play, so it came back. But, hey, I was just happy to see him tuck it and run nonetheless. But anyway, third down rifle shot here in the tight coverage. Uh, again, the arm strength is ridiculous with this guy, and, and the accuracy on this pass is also ridiculous. And um, that's going to win in the NFL right there. That kind of throw um, in a tight window. Look at this again. Look at how tight of a window this is for Dwayne Haskins. And he gets it in there. The defender is draped all over his receiver. And he still is able to fit it in there. Look, there, there's a guy coming to try to disrupt this play. Haskins throws a laser in there. And look at this hot sauce right in there. It even deflected and great catch by KJ Hill there. But that's a hell of a throw, folks, to zing it in there and move the sticks. That's a big time, big boy throw. Now, this isn't a big boy throw. This is a bad throw and it should have been picked off. And this is what I'm talking about with him. He's got to be able to slide, reset and deliver the football. Let's take a look at this one again. He should have been able to slide his feet. So the pressure is coming from the outside. All right, shuffle to the side, reset your feet, throw the ball accurately. He rushed. He didn't move his feet. He tried to throw it off his back foot. He got lucky there. That one should have been picked off. And again, another mistake potentially in the red zone. That's when you can ill afford those types of mistakes. He's got to be better in that kind of situation. But nonetheless, I think with experience, he'll get better in situations such as that. So we move on to the Michigan game. And this was a big game, really uh, he had already shown his ability um, throughout the course of the year, but this was the coming out party here. This was on a big stage against your rival. It made the conversation real about Ohio State potentially getting into the playoffs, even though it still was a long shot at this point. But this one was a big step in Ohio State potentially getting in to the NCAA uh, playoffs. He was outstanding in this football game let's take a look at what he was able to do um versus michigan now uh, this first one this is a lack of uh, anticipation on the wheel route look his his running back is winning he's winning he should have already thrown this football should have been thrown that football and then he overthrows him had he thrown it sooner he wouldn't have had to put uh, he would have been able to put a little bit more air on that he should have put more air on that but nonetheless he's got to anticipate that throw a little bit sooner this one here he needed a tad bit more um, accuracy on this pass. Uh, that still should have been caught by his receiver, but a, a little bit more accuracy. And maybe the receiver doesn't have to do a, a spinning pirouette to try to catch that football. Nonetheless, it, it, that should have been in stride up the sideline for a touchdown. So now here, uh, you, he shows you the ability. Hey, maybe he does have a little bit of wheels. I, I, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Maybe he can run a little bit. That wasn't bad. Uh, that wasn't half bad at all. Um, this is a nice touch. So earlier in the game, he missed the wheel route. This time, he throws this one with great anticipation. Really, he could have thrown that sooner, too. The anticipation is not there, but this one has a lot more touch. That's feathery soft. Unlike the other one that was a little bit more flat, that had nice air on it. Look at this again. So um, this is similar to the first one where he doesn't anticipate this well. This is a pick right there. He should be throwing that football now. Anticipate that. He waits, but this time it's feathery soft. Look at that touch. That's gorgeous right there. And uh, that set up a touchdown right before the half. And then finally, uh, this is hammering home the point that, look, he can and will run when necessary, when there's space and opportunity. Don't look for this quite often, though. This is not who he is. But just know it's there if he has to do it. So we go to his final game of his collegiate career, and this was one of his better games, to be honest with you. I was so impressed with him in this Washington game. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, no-nos in here, and we'll get to those, but the, the good far outweigh the bad in this game. And if you're going to leave a lasting impression in your last performance, this is what you pretty much want it to look like here. I thought Haskins was outstanding in this game. So let's take a look here. This first play, though, not what you're looking for from Haskins. He needs to scan the field here versus a three-man rush, and he's got plenty of time. And you'll see when you watch this back, 
There's a wide open receiver here on third and 17. Watch the corner route to the left of your screen in the slot. Man, is Parrish Campbell wide open. I'm talking about potentially a touchdown wide open. Uh, look at uh, Parrish Campbell in the slot to your left, left hand. And he's looking that way. And I, how he doesn't see and spot that corner route, I, I just, I don't know, man. I mean, against three-man rush, I'd like your vision to be there and see that and, and deliver the football and not take a sack there. But um, it happens. But he's got to make that throw. I, I feel like he's got to see that. Anyway, here's a situation where great eye manipulation on this touchdown pass. And you'll get a, a much better view of it on the backside. But that's gorgeous. Watch his head. Watch him manipulate this defense and, um, and, and really – Throw this receiver open because of the way his head is is positioned on this play. Watch him manipulate this safety uh, and manipulate this coverage. So he's staring down the left side of the field. Everybody reacts and look at the right side of the field over the middle. That is just gorgeous. Knew where he wanted to go the entire time. Stared the defense down. Made him react. That's great. He does it again here. Shows a little bit of a pocket mobility. Watch him step up, elude a little bit of pressure, and then deliver the football. This is what we want to see more of. He was forced to move his feet, reset, reshuffle, and then deliver. We don't see him do this accurately enough. This is gorgeous right here, and this is what we want to see more of from Haskins. We didn't see enough of it. So pressure from the outside, just, uh, just quietly step up, reset the feet, and throw an accurate football into a window. That's gorgeous. That's as good as it gets, folks. That's what you're looking for from Haskins at the next level. Good pocket mobility and a great strike for a touchdown. This right here can't happen at the next level. This has to be eliminated from his game totally. Like, we don't want to see this ever again. So here, you get a little bit of pressure on a rollout. that, And it, maybe it was a throwback pass across the field. Uh, but you can't do that. You know, with a little bit of pressure, you can't just say, oh, I got pressure. I'm just going to give my guy that's 5'11 a chance um, and, and severely underthrow the football at that um, so you see he takes a hit here, and, and really that's what prompted him to just throw it up for grabs. Don't throw the football up for grabs like that. I'd rather you just chuck it out of bounds than do this. And again, undersized receiver, corner in great position. You underthrow the football, you're asking for trouble. Luckily enough, this cornerback plays cornerback for a reason. And, and give the receiver a little bit of credit there, McLaurin, for uh, knocking that football away. But he can't do that at the next level moving forward. That just can't happen. But nonetheless, uh, watch him extend this play. And um, this is what you need in the red zone. In, in the red zone, you got to be either in rhythm and timing to, and throw into tight windows, or you've got to extend. Now, he doesn't complete a pass here, but guess what? He does do. He not only picks up yardage, but it's late in the first half. He gets out of bounds, stops the clock. That's good football right there. You pick up a gain of three, and um, you stop the clock in the process. And so here, this is just pure arm strength, folks. Off the back foot, doesn't step into this. Look at that laser shot. That is utterly ridiculous. And it, it just kind of hammers home the point that I've been making with him and his arm strength. That's why the misses down the field, they're, they're not an issue of arm strength. It's just inaccuracy and timing. He's not throwing the football down the field in rhythm and timing and with touch and air. Um, that's, that's ridiculous. Back foot, laser shot down to the one-yard line. And you'll see it again here on this next play. The very next play he does the same thing off his back foot. A lot of people kill Drew Locke for this, but if you can complete it, I don't really give a shit. That's gorgeous right there. Doesn't step into the throw at all. Accurate right out in front of the uh, receiver so he can catch it, turn up the field, and score a touchdown. Look at him here. No step. Doesn't follow through in, in terms of footwork at all here. This is just a pivot, turn, and hip flexion and flick it out there. That's, that's great arm strength right there. Here's another example of him throwing on the move. All right, a little bootleg here. Opposite direction. Paris Campbell is wide open in front of him the entire time. I don't know what he was waiting on, but hey, he remained open and he got it to him accurately. I'll take it, but I'd like to see him speed this process up. Paris Campbell, as you will see on this replay, is a wide open. Get it to him now. 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 What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? He finally spots him. He's still wide open and he gets it to him. And, uh, it was accurate. I don't have a problem with him finally getting there. He got to him eventually, but that window closes a lot quicker at the next level. And this is just an inaccurate throw here on a third down. Uh, Washington was starting to mount a little bit of a comeback. This was a third down situation where you could have potentially um, put them away. Look at this throw on this slant. Um, 
This ball is behind him. You throw this football out in front, and you got a first down. He's winning. He won on the slant. The ball's behind him. You'll get one more look at where this ball is, and it'll wrap us up. That ball is behind him. You see where that thing is? That's what allows this cornerback to get in there and knock that football away. Uh, a better placed ball here out in front of K.J. Hill. Not only is this a first down, he may still be running right now. So um, these are the things you, you worry about with Haskins. That was a clean pocket. No reason for an inaccurate throw there. And so um, I look at Dwayne Haskins, and to me, his NFL comp is a guy that he idolized growing up in Warren Moon. Um, I see similar athleticism or lack thereof. Warren Moon was not a scrambler. He was a pocket passer, which is what uh, Haskins fancies himself as. Uh, Warren Moon was 6'3". Haskins is 6'3". Warren Moon was 221. Haskins, 220. So the, the similarities between these two, not because they're black, the similarities between body type and the way they perform, being pocket passers with limited athleticism. The, the one thing I will say, though, is Warren Moon didn't miss the deep ball as much as Haskins does. I'm hoping that as he gets to the NFL and he gets comfortable, that that deep ball, because we know he's capable. I showed you the very first play versus TCU. He's capable. That play, that throw against Purdue in the end zone, he's capable of throwing a beautiful deep ball. He just needs to be more consistent. But that's Dwayne Haskins in a nutshell. I think that this guy has immense potential, but lack of um, experience, and you saw that with the corner blitzes over and over. Teams saw that on tape. He struggled with the corner blitz. They threw it at him. He never really adjusted throughout the season. So lack of experience, um, being able to reset his feet and then deliver the football. We saw him predetermine some throws and not move his feet in the pocket and step up and deliver dimes and instead throw some costly passes in the red zone that should have been picked off and a couple that actually were picked off. So there's some things he needs to clean up. But all in all, this guy has some talent. And I think he'll go off the board potentially in the top five picks of the 2019 NFL Draft. I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. Remember, if it's not your man, T, it's not the best NFL coverage. It could be. Make sure you subscribe to the Louis T Network on YouTube and also check out the Louis T Network podcast available on Stitcher, Google, Music Play, iTunes, and tune in. And of course, the website, LouisTNetwork.net. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.